Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy, and in my ongoing exploration of everything Overwatch lore related, it's time to take a look at skins, something you guys have requested. Many of Overwatch's skins have rich historic and cultural references behind them that give a lot of background and talking points to the lore and stories of our favourite characters and villains. Some are canon and directly show us things about the characters, most very much aren't, but either way they have some awesome details that give more background. In this video I'll be taking a look at the story and history behind two of Mercy's well-known skins, Valkyrie and Sigrun Mercy, with a special guest to help us out. Rooted in Germanic paganism, Old Norse and Viking mythology, history and legend, Mercy's skin naming and details on her skins very much tie into her character as it's been portrayed in Overwatch. Valkyries are by no means all sweetness and light though. We'll be explaining what Valkyries are in myth and legend, the history behind them, how Mercy skins fit into this in both naming and detail, and finally taking a look at where you can find other Valkyries in gaming and pop culture today. Firstly, what is a Valkyrie? Well, they're generally seen as a female helping spirit of the god Odin, the Allfather and head god of the Norse pantheon of gods. The name Valkyrie translates from the Old Norse, Valkyria, meaning chooser of the slain, and in myth this was a big part of their role. Selecting half of those who die in battle, the Valkyries bring their chosen to the afterlife Hall of the Slain, Valhalla, ruled over by Odin. The other half go to the goddess Freya's afterlife field, Falkvanger. Valkyrie Mercy actually has a voice line recorded, although not in the game currently, that directly references her skin name's meaning. I am the chooser of the slain. When she cries till Valhalla in game, when she uses a resurrection, she's saying to Valhalla. Interesting given that she's resurrecting fallen warriors, giving them a second chance. Any deceased chosen by a Valkyrie become Ein Heriar, Old Norse meaning single or once fighters. The Ein Heriar are preparing for the events of Ragnarok, the doom or twilight of the gods, and the name pre-Christian Norse gave to the end of their mythical cycle. During Ragnarok, several gods die, the cosmos is destroyed and is subsequently recreated. This theme of life ending, reincarnation and rebirth is significant in the stories of Valkyrie, particularly Sigrun, the other name of Mercy's skin, which we'll explain shortly. While they prepare to fight alongside Odin and the gods in the battle to end all battles, the Valkyries serve the Einheriar with mead and assist in battle preparations. Valkyries also appear in Norse tales as wives, lovers of heroes and other mortals, and are sometimes described as the daughters of royalty, accompanied by ravens and even connected to swans or horses. While the modern image of a Valkyrie is of an elegant noble maiden with a more positive association of choosing the worthy, their past pagan perception may have been more mixed, with perhaps some almost demonic characteristics as they had the power over both life and death. Other figures exist in Norse mythology called the Norns, supernatural women who chose the destinies of men. As Valhalla became more of a warrior's paradise in interpretations, some historians speculate that Valkyries may have had some blending of characteristics with the Norns by poets and storytellers. There's a quick summary of what Valkyrie are, but where does the history of the Valkyrie come from and why is it so important to Mercy skins and character? Early references to Valkyrie have been mentioned on the early 9th century rock runestone from Sweden, but a lot of Norse and Old Germanic references to Valkyrie stem from the Edda. The Edda are two 13th century compilations of Old Norse poems and mythological stories, known as the Poetic and the Prose. One of these, the Poetic Edda, is a series of poems from an Icelandic medieval manuscript known as the Codex Regius, arguably the most important source of compiled Norse mythology and Germanic heroic legends. Many writers and authors you'll be familiar with today have drawn inspiration from the Edda, including a certain J.R.R. Tolkien. Having graduated with Old Norse as a specialist subject, Tolkien drew a lot of inspiration from the poetic Edda's stories in The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings writing. His name of the Misty Mountains, some names of his dwarfs in The Hobbit, and even the very name of Middle-earth are drawn from Old Norse and the works of the Edda in particular. Middle-earth, via many linguistic paths, is a variation of Midgard, apparently. So why have we gone into such detail about these historic poems? Well, the Poetic Edda itself is both a direct source of inspiration for Valkyrie and Seagrun Mercy, as well as tied very closely to inspiring the character of Mercy herself. I'm now going to hand over to a guest who you may have heard before on the Voice Line and Lore Reaper and Diva videos, talking a bit more about the stories behind Valkyrie and Seagrun Mercy. Take it away. Thanks, Hammy. Time to tell the stories of some Valkyrie. In the tales of the Poetic Edda, we're interested in the stories of two particular Valkyrie, Air and Sigrun. As both a character and in her Valkyrie skin, Mercy is heavily inspired from Air. As well as her name meaning Mercy or Help in Old Norse, Air is also seen as a goddess and or a Valkyrie associated with medical skill. How much more of an association would you like? She's mentioned in the Poetic Edda as well as other runic inscriptions and has been compared to the Greek goddess Hygieia the daughter of the god of medicine, Asclepius, and the goddess personification of health, cleanliness, and hygiene. 
A speciality has also been speculated to be surgery, physical wounds and battlefield wounds too, effectively a patron of battlefield medicine, surgeons and life or death decisions. It's worth saying that due to multiple sources and interpretations made on a very slim amount of actual information about her, a lot of the above is open to interpretation. She is however associated with Mengloth, another Norse figure of healing, along with a series of other figures on a hill called Lifjaberg, Hill of Healing in Old Norse, so a healing association and name translation feel as solid as they can be. Besides her name, Mercy's character in Overwatch as a battlefield healer, a surgeon and having to make life and death decisions feels a very close natural match with Air and her speculated role in the Old Norse world. As for Mercy's Sigrun skin, the story of this particular Valkyrie is also another direct link to the poetic Edda and Old Norse and Viking myths. Sigrun's name apparently means a mixture of victory, Sig, and Rune, Rune, secret, or even secret law. We particularly like that last one. Sigrun's story is mentioned in at least two, if not three, poems of the Poetic Edda. Although she may have lived three lives, depending on interpretation, she's always associated with the sagas of the hero Helgi Hundingsbane. Helgi meets Sigrun when she's leading a band of nine Valkyries. The two fall in love and Sigrun tells Helgi that her kingly father has promised her to another king's son. Helgi invades the kingdom and slays anyone opposing their relationship. Only Sigrun's brother Dagir is left alive on condition that he swears fealty to Helgi. Dagir is obliged by honour to avenge his brothers and after having summoned Odin, the god gives him a spear. In a place called Fortiland, Dagir kills Helgi and goes back to his sister to tell her of his deed. Sigrun puts Dagir under a powerful curse, after which he is obliged to live on carrion in the woods. Helgi is put in a barrow but returns from Valhalla one last time so that he can spend a night together with Sigrun. Sigrun died early from the sadness but was apparently reborn again as a Valkyrie, Kara, and with Helgi being reborn as Helgi again, their stories continued in another saga. There doesn't feel to be any direct link between Sigrun's story and Mercy's Overwatch character, but it's definitely a cool tie to the Valkyrie theme and Old Norse background her character seems to be at least partially inspired from. As well as the Valkyrie, Air and Sigrun ties, Mercy's skin also has another interesting tie to Old Norse and Celtic mythology in the symbol on her armour. This comes from a variant of a symbol known as Tyketra. Different forms of this have been in Indo-European, Celtic and Germanic art and cultures for thousands of years, with Christian faiths using it as a symbol of the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. One such variant is known as the Valknut, interlocking triangles associated with Germanic paganism and found on a variety of archaeological objects from ancient Germanic peoples. It's associated by some with Odin and the Vikings as the Knot of the Slain and has been found on stone carvings as a funerary motif where it probably signified the afterlife. It's sometimes also called Hrungnir's Heart after a legendary giant featured in the Prose Edda. Hrungnir fought with and was slain by Thor over a wager he'd made with Odin over who had the fastest horse. Gods and their squabbles, eh? The Nine Points are also suggestive of the Nine Worlds and the Nine Fates familiar to any of you who are fans of Marvel and Thor, I'm sure. The interwoven shape perhaps suggests the belief of connection of the three realms of Earth, Hell and the Heavens, and the nine domains they encompass. You may be able to spot this symbol in some films today. Apparently, when Thor's hammer is used, occasionally you can see a Triketra style symbol light up on it. We've not seen it ourselves, but let us know if you've spotted it. Whether it's Celtic, Germanic or everything in between, this symbol on Mercy's armour is a nice connection again to the rich history and myth that her Valkyrie skins are drawn from. Ok, hope you've enjoyed the brief history lesson. Finally we'll explain where you can see references to Valkyries in many places today. Over to you, Hammy. Thanks very much for the help, mystery guest. Ok, we've learnt more about where Mercy's Valkyrie skin comes from and how the names and details of her skins are really tied into Norse myth and legend. When it comes to the Norse myths and legends, they've been an inspiration to so many writers, Tolkien aside, that I had to mention a few more cool Valkyrie ties. You don't have to look too far from Overwatch even when it comes to the world of video games. World of Warcraft's latest expansion, Legion, is chock full of references to Valkyrie and Old Norse and Germanic mythology, and the Valkyr have a prominent part in Warcraft lore too, as agents of once the Lich King, then Sylvanas Windrunner. In World of Warcraft, the Valkyr are descended from the Virkul, 
Half giants of Northrend, ancestors of humanity, the Viracle offspring were made weak by the curse of flesh, which was unleashed by Yogg-Saron, corrupting the Forge of Wilts that the Titans in the Warcraft universe used to make new beings. Valkyr a winged female Viracle. The originals were ascended warriors of the light who served the Titan Odin, sound familiar? By bringing the spirits of the glorious dead to his halls of valor. For the Scourge, the Valkyr were the Lich King's agents in the events of Wrath of the Lich King, and after his defeat, Nine remained. They bound themselves to Sylvanas Windrunner and helped her replenish the ranks of the Forsaken. In the broken shore of Legion, particularly the Stormheim region, it's practically an entire zone of Old Norse based lore and story. The Valkyr are there, are an organisation of shield maidens from the Tidescorn clan of Viracal that aspire to be Valkyr. There's access in Stormheim to Helheim or Hel, run by Helia, a fallen Valkyr who looks after the underworld. I'm sure you can see more Norse parallels. I could do a whole video on this alone. Warcraft lore though is a whole rabbit hole and done very well by other people, so I'll leave it there for now. If you'd like to see more Warcraft or other game lore though, do let me know in the comments. Finally, just to finish up, the Norse gods in the cinema and a new Valkyrie coming to our screens look no further than Thor and the Avengers. The third in the Marvel Thor trilogy of movies, Ragnarok, is out November of 2017. Now, not loads is known about the plot of Ragnarok, but we'll see Thor potentially teaming up with the Hulk, and if it's anything like the old Norse myth that we've explained earlier in this video, there's going to be a potential fight against problems in Asgard and perhaps the death of a few characters too. Given that Chris Helmsworth has only signed onto a six movie deal as Thor and this will be his fifth, who knows, maybe he's on the chopping block. We'll also see, most importantly, a Valkyrie, or THE Valkyrie, introduced to the Marvel Cinematic Universe for the first time. Valkyrie, played by Tessa Thompson of Westworld fame, if you watch that show, will be on our screens in the MCU for the first time, but she's already been a Marvel character in the comics for 46 years. First showing up in the Avengers comics in 1970, she's been based on Brunhilde, another famous shield maiden or Valkyrie in Germanic mythology from the Volsunga saga. Parts of which, you've guessed it, have also been referenced in the various Eddas we've been talking about. Valkyrie in the comics led the Choosers of the Slain, or Valkyrie, again, does that sound familiar? Had a romantic engagement with Thor, teams up with the Hulk and more in the Defenders as a superhero team, and a whole bunch more. I can't wait to see what her character and role will be in this film. Thanks very much for tuning in to this first Skin Lore and Origins video, where we've gone really deep into the story, origins and inspirations behind Mercedes Valkyrie and Seagrin skins in Overwatch. If you like this vid, do throw a like and share it, and do let us know in the comments what you thought, what you enjoyed, or maybe what you thought could be improved. It all helps make the videos better, and do say what skins or characters you'd like to see covered next. For more Overwatch lore, heroes, voice lines, interactions, maps, world, and so much more about the story and game, do check out my Overwatch lore series, and maybe subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of thing. Cheers to my supporters on Patreon who make these longer to produce videos possible. If you'd like to see how you can support this kind of content from just a dollar a month, do check out my Patreon link below. Until next time, I've been Hammy, and big thanks to our guests too. Take it easy.